How you doing guys? Just ran back out here in the garage. It's 9.30. Take barefoot. Uh, to answer a question for you, Dizzy. Okay, here we go. You're asking what this is for. I know Doug and Lakeside Ranch already answered it for you. This one's full of silicone. Basically, it's for this tube right here. Okay. The tube goes on here and then goes right into your tappet cover. So the blow by that comes out of your engine gets drawn back up and gets drawn into the engine. Period. So with that, you have a steady airflow inside the engine and the engine doesn't build up a pressure. It actually tries to get into a vacuum, but it can't. That's nice and simple. Uh, you could probably get one of these anywhere. This one actually, but on this one, it's all life. So it goes on like that and goes down. There's a carburetor for three and a half. That's a carb for a five. Okay. This is what you're asking about. This is actually the fuel pump. The carburetor is called the pulse check carburetor. Okay. And if you look right here, obviously, you take the cover off with the four screws. You can have a membrane look the way it's supposed to look. So if I show it to you wrong, you might remember it that way. And uh, that's why I never understood the purpose of taking a test, then marking it, and then never giving the answer. What the hell do you learn that way? There's your cover. You can take your four screws off. And take your cover off. See, there's one uh, alignment pin there. Okay, you want to do it sideways if you can, or slightly angled, because there is a spring sitting here. Very small spring with a nice steel seat on it. Okay, the purpose of this seat is so you don't rip the diaphragm, which in this case is stuck on the back of this. Okay, this hole right here. It actually goes into the intake. See my finger? Where is it? Blocking the light. Okay. Every time there's an intake stroke or a, a negative pressure, it pulls the diaphragm. Then when that negative pressure disappears, it releases it. And this thing goes back and forth. And it draws just enough fuel from here, okay, into, let me get it right. Draws it into the upper one. Okay. This little flap is here. Okay. Pushes it through the passage, which is all back behind here. Puts it here. And it comes out through that tiny little hole there. And in the gasket on top of your fuel tank, there's another tube here. The gasket, the hole's a little bit bigger, and it goes right inside your fuel tank. And in the upper part of your tank, on the, only on the big tanks, is another little tiny gas tank inside. So you're drawing fuel from here, pushing it up to what I just showed you, and then it fills up a tiny little tank in here that has a little opening on the top. So this always stays full to the rim. And that's so they can keep the mixture at a steady mixture. Because if they did it from here, as this worked its way down, it would get leaner and leaner and leaner and harder to draw it up. Okay, those little tiny tanks that you saw on my other ones, little two horses, don't have the second well, and they don't have to pump. They're not pulse check already because it's not required. Okay, basically what you want to do is, yeah, I'll show you right. I'll show you right on this carburetor what you got to do to make that carburetor function again. You got to take the diaphragm off. You got to clean this passage out, blow it out. You got to clean that passage out, blow it out. One's gonna blow out here. One's going to blow out uh, the tube. Okay? You do that, your diaphragm and everything, your pump will be working good. So that means that the tank will be filling up, the upper well. Then you can look down inside here. There you go, I think right there. To the right of me is one hole, and to the left, just in that shadow, there you go, is the second hole. Okay? The second hole in the back is a little bigger. The one to the front is a little smaller. The one in the front is the idle. That's in front of the throttle plate. The one behind it is actually what you'd use under a load or if they have it set up for 3600 RPM. Once, once you come off idle, 
you're going into the second port. Okay? Make sure both of those are clear. Okay? You're going to have a jet there. you got to obviously screw the jet out first. Make sure the jet's clear. Make sure the little tube going down is clear. That's the whole entire carburetor. So if your tube is clear up into here, you'll see it in the threads. Your jet is clear. Those two passages are clear. You're blowing here and it's clear, and you're blowing the other one and it's clear there. That's your whole carburetor overhaul. Carburetor should work like a champ. Okay. And as for this right here, there's all different styles depending on what year and what the carburetor was used for. Um, I heard Doug say it's for the throttle. Depends on the actual model. Now this one right here, they use a washer and a spring, and they use it looks like an Allen key, but a square stock. And that's your throttle, and it operates the governor. Okay, so you would go like this, it would nail, and then the governor would regulate it with the spring. Whoops. So, but the setup you have, you have that pivot arm on yours, which would be the same as the cat bike. And this is what you would put on yours. You have this arm here. Screw it into there. You would put the little bracket up here and you'd run your cable down. They actually sell this kit. It comes with the L bracket. Nice piece of aluminum. These two pieces here, which uh, look like homemade uh, plumbing fittings. Comes with this piece here. Um, and it comes with the arm and is actually a return spring on here. Okay, it comes with all that stuff for like nine bucks. So, it's actually a nice setup. It's nice and simple. It always seems to work, and if the cable snaps, it goes back down to an idle, which is a good thing. Especially if you have a powerful engine and it takes off on you, you don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> which is most people in the world, when the engine runs away, they panic. So, I hope that helps you. Like I said, on eBay, I think you get five of these for a couple of dollars. I forgot what it was. See, this one's stiff as a board. These things have to be pliable because they're little reed valves. Okay. You get a couple of these off eBay. Um, and that's about it. And just start cleaning. That carburetor should work like a champ. Haven't seen one yet that's that's been so bad that it's not cleanable. Okay. The one that you saw me put on that two horse, that other pulse check carburetor, that's similar to this one. The oxidation in here was so bad that this was clogged and the whole passage was white. I was still able to clean it out in the car and work like a champ. So, yeah, this is a five horse. That's a three horse. Very similar. Bolt hole spacing is different. This is smaller. This is bigger. This is longer. Most of the tanks aren't this deep. They're a hair bit shorter. But this is, was with generator, I think it was. If you're looking for markings, uh, some of these carburetors, I see them with a number 5 on them. People seem to hunt those down for some reason. Most of them have no markings on them whatsoever that I've ever found. So this one here, the choke's been removed and it's been honed. You can see the rivet hole on the bottom. That's the piece that you have that actually gives you resistance when you pull the choke. They put a welch plug in the back and they call it good. So, this carburetor here is broken. I had gotten this in a box of parts. So, okie dokie. Like I said, don't put this in backwards. The collar goes out just like that. Sits pretty much flush, just a hair above. Just a hair above. I said it just pulses. Okie doke, you dizzy. Uh, any other questions, let me know. I'll talk to you later.